just had a neighbor who um, sent me this video of a Jewish scientist who I put quote unquote converted to Christianity because, you know, Judaism is, is beyond religion and way of life. But he explained like he had an experience in his college time where he had like uh, seen Jesus. So when you're when you're debating or you're coming across or talking to somebody like like him as an example who shares a, a visceral experience, and I don't doubt those ex experiences. People have uh, many mystical experiences like that. How do you like? He doesn't. There's no kind of knowledge to uh, explain it unless he's unless you just try and approach that he's misinterpreting that experience um how 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 do you address that so that actually should make things more complicated because as it turns out every religion has many adherents who are thoroughly convinced that their god or a prophet has appeared to them and are willing to die for this this happened they Look, I was the rabbi of Indonesia for quite a number of years before I moved to Jerusalem, made Aliyah. And I lectured throughout the Far East. So people frequently believe that the Virgin Mary was appearing to them. And Bali, an island that has a very devout Hindu community, very frequently met people who believe that Hanuman, the monkey god of Hinduism, very prominent in Hindu ritual and belief appear to them all the time. And I met many, many Indians who were followers of Sai Sai Baba, who not only does he appear to them, but they remember him, he didn't die that long ago, who would resurrect the dead and perform miracles and have them see visions right in front of them. So the problem is that every religion has followers that have visions. And they all can't be true. I mean, let's be frank. These religions are making claims that are mutually exclusive of each other. They can all be true, but people are having these visceral experiences, these numinous experiences in their religion. And the literature is all the way up to the sky on testimonials and so on. And, and, and what evangelicals do, frankly— is they discount them. They do, well, what about, because the, they don't believe that you can worship the Virgin Mary or, or any, they just dismiss that. It means only the miracles that happen in the name of the religion that I already subscribe to, that's the one. And, and why is it n no one is having the monkey god appear to them in Brooklyn? So it's someone who had some who's in geographically in the right place, who has already been exposed to that sort of iteration of religion, and they're the ones always having the vision. Like, where's the monkey god in Houston? But it ain't there. It's only happening in Indian, Bali, and some. Well, there's your answers. That's what's going on. You have to use Tanakh as your guide to know how to worship Hashem, the Torah addresses this in Deuteronomy 13. And that's how I respond. And that's very meaningful because people do recognize that people have these visions in every religion. They all can't be correct. And therefore, having the experience, no matter how deep, profound, sincere, people are well willing to die for their experiences in every religion. Therefore, that cannot be the barometer for truth. What do you mean they can't all be correct? Sure, they, they, all, they all happen. They all, uh, I don't doubt those experiences. I think you even acknowledge that they're, they're real experiences people have, but you mean maybe they're just... The, not the experiences aren't correct. No, the experiences, 15% of healthy people hallucinate during their life. And they'll almost always hallucinate over either about a dead relative or a religious figure. Although there's a lot of chicanery going on, there are some people who genuinely feel an encounter with their understanding of the divine. That's not the part I dismiss at all. But Christianity and Judaism can't both be true. I mean, Jesus is the Messiah or he's not the Messiah. God is Unitarian, one alone, or Jesus is the second part of a triune Godhead. 
They really cannot both be true. The claims are not compatible with each other. That's what I mean. I mean, if you're using visions, which for many people in every religion, I have no doubt is, is sincerely believed by adherents, but with the, the religions are not compatible. Hinduism and Judaism are not compatible with each other. There are some common themes, but they're not compatible with each other. I mean, they can't. This is not politically correct. The Christian religion and Judaism just can't both be correct. The Torah is not really that ecumenical. You shall have no other gods before me. Does not allow for, you know, does not allow for Hare Krishna. It's just really that simple. Maimonides even right though that it's it has its place. It's 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 like a precursor. Like um, Muhammad and Jesus were, you know, meant to come. They were um, kind of precursors for the real uh, Messiah. In Maimonides, in well, I'll explain that. I mean, that's a question. I guess it's a really good question. So, at the end of Hilchus Malachim, the Laws of Kings. The last chapters, first Maimonides explains that there was no greater stumbling block to mankind than Jesus. And he says things that are not flattering about the founder of Christianity. He does, however, explain why did Christianity emerge at the moment that it did. And that role is messianic in that the nations of the world now are filled with ideas about a one-God monotheistic orientation, which did not exist before the destruction of the Second Temple. There was no other monotheism besides Judaism. That was it. And therefore, the nations of the world began to understand that there is a one-God orientation, that there are commandments, there are mitzvot, there's an idea of a Messiah, and so on. Except these nations thought that the covenant that God made with the Jewish people was abrogated. The commandments, because of their demigod, has now been abrogated. But the moment Mashiach comes, these Christians will immediately understand their error and fulfill the words of Zechariah 8.23, where 10 Gentiles of different languages will grab the shirt of a Jew and say, take us with you, for now we know that God is with you. So Maimonides is not in any way saying that the tenets of Christianity are true, but the religion is different than non-Jewish religions prior to destruction of the Second Temple in that they were so dissimilar that if the Messiah would have come then, other religions would have gone, what's a Messiah? What does that mean? What are commandments? What is the Torah? Now Christianity has filled the world so that the world is now prepared to immediately recognize their error, but Maimonides is not soft on Christian doctrine.